Good evening. It's time for this visit again. And uh, this week sort of went by um, a little uneventful, with the exception that the sun finally came out. So of course, we was all excited uh, for a day or two. And um, now we are right back to normal. Um, I would like to tell you that uh, if you notice, I'm in a different chair today. And there's a really good explanation for that. Um, I've been looking forward to this show for a long time. And so we're finally going to do the one on the crop circles. And the reason I'm sitting in this chair, because in just a few minutes, I'm going to switch places, um, so to speak, with my guest, Barbara McGuire, that you know. Hi, Barbara. Hello. And we thought instead of this being a one-man show, we would just handle it like that. The time of the taping today is? March 22nd. March 22nd, mm -hmm. OK. We had agreed to put that on record for future references. Yes. Uh -huh. And we got a lot of interesting stuff to do today. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you a story real quick before, we, before I turn it over to you okay. as the hostess, OK? Um, occasionally, I see things on my TV that nobody else seems to see on theirs. So I'm not sure if I really saw this or not. But some of you know that. I am somewhat friends with some of the Native Americans, uh, the Navajos and the Hopis. And then a few, of course, you, Barbara, and you are of Cherokee descent. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And one of the legends that they have is that uh, eventually in the, the time when the earth changes come to a full. The first circle. The, yeah. the first mm -hmm. circle. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's the Sunnis and the Hopis, and I'm not really sure on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Which one? But in in a lot of the legends, it show uh, they talk about the fact that there would be a spider web across mankind. And of course, I don't really make predictions. I leave that up to other people, you know. But the interesting thing was on TV, on my TV, I saw that by the year 2003, they're going to put a new internet system in the lower atmosphere, no, in the lower orbit. They called it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the way that looks like, uh, it, it, anyway, these satellites is going to be all around the Earth. And then it illustrated how it all fits together. And not only did it look like a web, it also looked like a fishnet type ball type thing, where mm -hmm. if it had a string, it could just bounce it. And the reason I thought I wanted to mention that today is because on one of the clips that we see later, um, they're talking about that in the year 2003, something is different in the solar system, uh, which indicated by one of the crop circles. That's right. Mm -hmm. The one that doesn't have the Earth in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if anybody else saw that, maybe you could call me and <laughs> tell me yes. I didn't see it, because you didn't. <laughs> I didn't see it. No. Yeah. OK, no. then, Miss Hostess, I think I will turn it over to you. OK, all right. Well, I've been ex really excited about being able to do this show, too. Uh, the crop circles have always interested me, although I'm, I don't have any expertise on them. And I haven't gone into any of them like you have, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, so I'm really excited about doing this. Um, first I want to ask is, um, what, how did you get into this, and what is your affiliation with the, uh, the crop circles? Well, um, that's a story all by, by itself. Um, I, when I first came to this country, I was kind of sad that Native Americans seemed not to have been mentioned as much as I thought they should have. And so as I went public with my spirituality, I became interested. Uh, well, it sort of fell into my lap, the Native American mm -hmm. scene. And um, there was a lecture up in Seattle um, by a very spiritual Hopi. And uh, of course, you know, I wanted to take an advantage of that. And I went there. And when we got there, I knew the promoter. Uh, the gentleman giving the lecture had gotten stuck in the snow, except it wasn't snowing. You know, that right. should have been my clue. But. Yeah. And so instead of returning the money, the lady decided she was just going to do something else. So she looked around the audience. And lo and behold, there was Colin Andrews. He's the head of the Crop Circle Connector in England. Mm -hmm. And then there was uh, Peter Davenport from the UFO Hotline. Brenda Roberts um, from Journey TV, and Busty Taylor. The, uh, he's the pilot that, from England that flies over the formations and reports and analyzes them. Yes. Uh -huh. 
And I thought, well, gee, how odd. Um, they all gave, they showed their slides and they, they did all their little talking and then there was 20 minutes left. So the lady said to me, oh, oh Kenya, that's what she called me. Uh, she said, do you have your UFO um, pictures? And I said, well, of course I do. And so I finished you know, the time that they had for lectures and I've stayed in touch with them ever since. Now had Universe told me to go to a UFO convention, of course, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't yeah, have. You wouldn't have at that but time. That was the means how to get me there, right. and, and I've been, uh, I've been pretty connected and a networker. It's, uh, I'm a networker for, for all of them. And we've all, become mm -hmm. friends, especially Brenda, that yes. is allowing us today to do the clips. You know. Wonderful. Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. was what five, six years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. if anybody goes on to my web page here again, you can access, you know, everybody's web page. Yeah. And okay. that's how I ended up with that. <clears throat> and you did bring the clips. Mm -hmm. so we're going to have inserts today. For yeah. The, we brought mm -hmm. plenty of clips, thanks to Brenda Roberts, <laughs> which is my friend now. And she taped in excess of 300 shows and uh, allowed me to share clips uh, with you. So if you don't mind, maybe I will go ahead and... Um, I think that would be great. And 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 mm -hmm. have have him play the, the clip with Colin Andrew on it. And in there is that crop circle that I made reference to earlier where the earth is not present. So anytime we're ready we could do that. We are privileged to have some time to discuss with Colin Andrews the crop circles, their significance, and what the meanings actually may be now. Colin. Hi Brenda. <laughs> This is such a delight to have a chance to just spend even a few minutes with you. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. I want to ask you just to dive right in about the crop circle. You've been studying, researching them for 13 years. Sure. And I know it's been a labor of love. Sure. Most and of the time. Exactly. I want to know what your feeling is now as to how we're beginning to figure it out, what the messages might be. Well, it, it certainly has been a hard road. I mean, we've been basically stamp collecting for 13 years now, uh, looking initially at simple single circles, uh, then slightly more complex uh, in the traditional Celtic form, Celtic cross, five circles forming a cross. Uh, in 1990, suddenly, out of absolutely nowhere, with no suggestion that the phenomenon was going to burst as it did, uh, like a snowflake freezing, basically, uh, we had a very simple but a uh, simple pictogram, but comparing it to its uh, forefathers, as it were, it, it was complex. There were straight lines. First time we had seen straight lines connecting component parts of that circle. And so it has evolved now uh, to very complex forms, agroglyphs, um, and how large? See, you know, when we're talking formations, sure. I don't think people realize when they see the pictures on TV or in books right. how huge they no, are. No, it's a very good point to, to mm -hmm. actually to emphasize that. The very smallest is a half meter, nothing mm -hmm. larger than that. Uh, the largest we have ever seen, half a mile half a across. Mile. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and a, a, and a whole series of very complex yeah. geometric mm -hmm. shapes, but sharing a common axis, and that major axis, half a mile across, appearing in a period we know for sure of less than a five-hour nighttime period, next to a highway, and uh, it, if people had been involved. Uh, starting from that position, mm -hmm. in that construction, it would have taken an army of people, well organized, uh -huh. uh, with technical equipment, uh, capable of laying it out. And then, of course, to have those plants analyzed and find that, as on four other continents in the world, the plants have changed at the cellular anatomic level. Now, there in the itself, now, major, so you do major bring problem. the scientific approach to the study of these formations. Well, I, I'm an electrical engineer myself. Mm -hmm. I've come from the sciences. I've studied many sciences. And uh, certainly, I think perhaps because that was my background, the uh, Margaret Thatcher government mm -hmm. uh, asked me to supply, prepare, and then supply them with the first technical and scientific reports on the subject. Uh, that was back some years ago to the Deputy Prime Minister then. Um, but we, we have engaged many, many scientists and engineers like myself in the study, and we are 
slowly but surely getting somewhere, but with now a limited media interest because, of course, we're still suffering very majorly by like the Doug and Dave complex, syndrome. Right, <laughs> exactly. But it's just like you said, you've got a lot of experts. Now, recently in the 95 formations, they took a major, I think, uh, switch to what you call astronomical solar systems, yeah. talking about our universe. What, yeah. you know, give me some feedback on what you think about that. Well, uh, prior to June of last year, we had only five or six patterns of four and a half thousand in the database. How that many? I want to read that. Four and a half thousand. Okay. That's uh, because they're still uh -huh. arriving at peak at, peaking at about ten a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had five or six that had been deciphered by one individual or another and looking at it through their particular eyes. You know, wh whether it was an astronomer looking at it, whether it was a plant expert looking at it. Um, all applying their own ex expertise, but five or six had been deciphered in one fashion or another. Mm -hmm. There was a leaning, a steering, um, I, I, I think I would put it this way, mm -hmm. a suggestion in the last four or five years that we might be looking at astronomy, of, uh, at certainly star clusters, star mm -hmm. systems, and information related to the heavens. Yeah. But we, we have been keeping an eye on that. I mean, my close friend, Professor Archie Roy at Glasgow University, mm -hmm. Uh, in Scotland uh, is deeply involved and, and all the time we were looking uh, at these astronomical possibilities but nothing so staggeringly important uh, have we ever seen than what we have called the solar system now. It was a pattern, a type 367 as we've catalogued it, appeared last year as you, as you rightly say, the very first of a series which, in which, in looking at them, anybody, the layman out in the street, uh -huh. a third grader, I mean, you they, know, studying the solar system, could it had to be the solar that. system. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we now have an astrophysicist um, looking with uh, an astronomer, um, Professor Hawkins, down in Washington, looking at that one specific pattern, and the information it's revealed has been absolutely staggering. The degree of eccentricity. They, they are not perfectly circle. There are a number of concentric rings within a series of circles, which you'll mm -hmm. perhaps see on the screen. Yes, we'll, we'll we show that. We have no <laughs> right. Well, we have proven by these experts and their work mm -hmm. is that's what I'm about to present here at the Whole Life Expo, wow. is that the degree of eccentricity and the AU value, which is the astronomical value, the astronomical unit, as it is seen in the sky, as we are seen in the heavens, are so precise to be unbelievable. It actually gives us a date, a forward